My name is Stefan Bauman, and thanks once again for tuning in to one of my podcasts. Today I talked to one of my students on how to become excellent. What does it take? What type of discipline? What kind of tenacity? What does an artist have to do to really become great? Just remember that art isn't easy. There are a lot of elements that you have to think about to produce a really great work of art. And let's face it, when you become really great at painting, they put your work in a museum or you become the attraction on Antique Roadshow. So sit back and relax and listen to my conversation with my student on really developing the excellence that is needed to become a great painter. Everything that has to do with, with painting is with yourself, with your mind. It's not on the canvas and what you do on the canvas doesn't really matter if you can kind of wrap your head around it. We're not producing widgets or we're not producing things like that. We're, we're learning how to, to, to paint. And in that process, it's like playing the piano. When you play the piano at the end of an hour, you don't have anything except the sheer practice of doing that. And basically that's what painting is. It's just a sheer practice. Well, one of the things that you're doing right is that you're staying in the conversation. Having a coach, having somebody that you, you respond to uh, on a weekly basis is crucial to get anywhere, to have, a, to have a mentor, to have a guide, because without that, you're going to go on the internet, you start watching some videos on painting, and with painting, you're just three clicks away from porn. You know, so it's, it's kind of an easy watch somebody else doing something to drifting off and doing something else. It's like going to YouTube, you know, you go to YouTube and you're watching a painting, you watch my video on painting and all of a sudden before you know it, you know, you're, you're watching uh, the latest videos coming out of Italy of cats being, doing stupid things because, and that's basically when I say you're doing porn, it's that's, that's what they call like YouTube click porn. It's like things pop up and you go, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're finding out, you know, unusual recipes to do with hamsters. So you're distracted. Okay, so you really have to. And the thing is, it doesn't matter what's out there. There are no great secrets. Nobody's going to sit there and go, you know what? I've been, this is the secret that you get. Look at this, this brush here. Nobody knows about it, but this fan brush, if you can get this fan brush, that's all you need. That's, that's the hidden secret. Every professional artist has this, but they don't admit it. And so a lot of people sit there and they spend their time looking, looking, looking for the thing that's missing. And the thing that's missing is in your brain. It's in your, in your sight. And you have to stay focused on your mission. And part of what you need to do to, to, to be in the right space is to have a mission and have a mission statement, just like a business, to really find out where it is that you want to go. And a lot of times having a coach or, or a mentor or, or an artist that you're in love with kind of fundles you. And you said you needed some guardrails. That's where the guardrails come because you have to visualize where it is you want to go. And part of that is not just getting work done and you know just thinking, oh, it's just canvases, but it's actually trying to find a road of excellence. There's a lot of people that do gymnastics and aerobics, but they'll never be a, a, an Olympic champion because it's not their focus. And no matter how good they are at gymnastics, it requires a focus of an Olympian champion to become an Olympian champion. Anything else isn't. And when I talk about the three things that artists require to become an artist, you have to have uh, the desire. And you have the desire. When you have the desire, uh, that's there. But desire is kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of really loose because that's where you just like go. Everybody desires to be a painter. Even if they don't paint, they go, oh, wow, I wish I could. All I could do is draw flies. So they have the desire. Then you have to have the discipline. Discipline is like getting up every morning at four o'clock because you have to be at work at nine and you want to get five hours done. Discipline is coming home from work and painting as opposed to doing anything else. Discipline is just being at your craft all the time, because if you're not at your craft, you're not really growing. And then tenacity, because in the process of being tenacious, you have to be willing 
to give up stuff and drive and forward and do a lot of shitty paintings. And you have to be okay with doing shitty paintings because of the possibility of the outcome a year from now. Because I guarantee you the greatest paintings you're doing this year, next year to you will look like shit. And all you need to do to prove that is look at the paintings you did last year. Yeah, and you go, wow, I can't believe that I was doing that. And part of that is to produce a lot of paintings. You know, even just lately, you kind of go off the rails a little bit, but you need to because you need to see what it is that's missing. And then you need to kind of start filling in the gaps. Like you said, I'm not going to work anymore by, by gosh, by golly. But the thing is, you need to do by gosh, by golly to see what is your natural north and if that needs to be corrected. So you need to make these mistakes. And you need to make the mistakes without having any attachment to it. If you're learning to do a composition, a piano piece, you know, you work on it, you work on it, you work on it. There's no outcome that that day, that week, that month. In fact, it won't even be performed maybe ever. There's a lot of guitar pieces you practice on for hours that nobody will ever hear. Not even your fiance, right? And so they just disappear. You'll never record them. You'll never, you know, they just disappear. And, and the problems with paintings is you have all this rubble that you have that you create. And then you look at it and go, oh, look at all this shit that I got. I'm not very good. Where am I going? It's like, you know, the best thing you could do with those is shove those into the garage because you need to fill up your garage with crap before you actually get any good. So you need to be willing to look at the crap and just go, well, that's interesting. That's like a, a, a piece of music that I played that I no longer want to play anymore. And it's just gone. It just evaporates. Paintings don't evaporate. They come back and they haunt us. So what you're doing right is that you are focusing. You are doing some experimental work. Part of what you want to do right is that you want to paint what you see. But what you're doing wrong is really overly analyzing and taking things apart. You visually, you have to be somewhat objective and say, what is the effect that that is creating? And this is things that I even do. Like right now, I'm doing a Mount Shasta painting. And, you know, the top part of Mount Shasta is in snow. The bottom part are trees coming up into the snow. There are these glaciers and there's trees that are growing out of the base of the snow. And, you know, at one point my brain goes, oh, I need to paint all those little trees. And then last night I kind of pick up a fan brush and I just loaded up with paint and I just went flat onto that wet paint and I created a hundred trees with the tip of my brush. It just went. And, and so I created a hundred trees and all of a sudden that looks more spontaneous and good than painting each and every one. One of your paintings just became a clusterfuck because you spent so much time trying to render it like uh, every leaf has got to be like perfect and twisted. And you just don't have that kind of dedication and patience at this time to do that. Nor is it really interesting to look at if I make it look like a photograph. You need to worry about your impact and your lighting. And so your subject matter has to be that way. You need to focus on trying to get your light, your, your effect of light, so people want to come and see your painting. And then as you come up to the painting, you want to see the painting evolve into your details and into all these beautiful aspects of what it is to have a really beautiful painting. So what you're doing right is that you're, you, you've got somebody in your life that you're accounted to. What you're doing right is that you are painting and every week consistently you get something done. If we wanted to, to say what you're doing wrong is that I feel like if you're really dedicated or desire to become an artist, you have to have a little more discipline to get more work done and have the tenacity to work through boredom and work through tiredness and deal with the fact that you may have to overwork yourself and be tired for your own work to be able to make your artwork work. And you have to have the tenacity of dealing with the bullshit of being an artist and a lot of that is other people's opinions and a lot of that is also people, other people's ideas. You have to focus on what it is that you want and that has to come from inside of you. So what you probably need that is missing is a little bit more desire and you can sit and you can sit there and go, I want to paint like Sargent. That's what I want and I want to focus my work and then you got to have tenacity to stay on to that. Or you want to paint like church or you want to paint like um, a whistler. If you want to paint like um, Van Gogh or if you want to paint like Monet, you have to become these artists. You have to view what it is 
that makes their work so powerful. And you need to sit and evaluate your work and say, you know what, I'm just going to work on that. You got to be tenacious to get it. And it might not be on this painting, it might not be on the other. And you may have to repaint a painting over and over and over again. But when you look at artists that are great, they're passionate. They're passionate. You've got the passion. You have the passion. You want to become a great artist. What's missing? What is the most important change I need to make with my painting? Yeah, it's not your painting. It's you. You know, you have to apply yourself more. The most important thing is to change. Um, what you're not doing well uh, has, again, not nothing to do with your painting. You know, when you show up for your painting, you do it well. Um, there's nothing missing. And, and you can watch all the videos that you want, but that's not going to turn your brain into becoming somebody you need to find out how you paint and then you need to figure out how to work with that natural north that you have and so and you only find that out by doing lots of paintings and so what you need to do what's important change you you can make is to put in a reality basis like work so that roger and you know rogers and hammerstein they asked hammerstein how do you produce all this work and he goes you know what if I feel it or if I don't feel it, I show up in my studio at 8 a.m. And the thing is, you know, at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., he said I had to sit on the piano and I had to push the keys down. And so we, even when you're tired, you got to squeeze out a big mound of blue, a big mound of yellow, a big mound of red, a big, and I say a big pile, not a little like, well, if I get tired, I've got an out. It's like, no, at the end of my day, I got to wipe this off. And so I'm going to be committed. And then you got to commit yourself to sit and work, even if you're tired. And you need to, to be in a space where you're uninterrupted without television and turn off any external sources. Put your phone away so you can spend three to four hours in your brain because it takes an hour to, to transport yourself to a place. Ultimately, painting is what you, what you see. You know, I teach paint what you see. Temperatures are as important as values. Values are as important as color. Everything is important. Your composition, if your composition sucks, it doesn't matter if the values are good. If you paint what you see, you got to get the value and the color and the temperature together. Then you have to learn how to put your, your paint on the canvas. There's a lot of things. And somehow I think that people think that I should be better right now and that this is easy. Art isn't easy. I don't know what people have ever told you about, but they build museums for artists because it's a rare thing. When Antique Roadshow pops up, you have a lot of people making clocks and furniture and stuff. But oh my God, if a painting comes up, you better turn on the volume because that's going to be the thing that's going to be worth that day. It's a, To be a good painter is hard and you need to practice. And you're going to produce a lot of shit and you're going to do a lot of bad values. And the only way you're going to get good at values is by doing a lot of bad values until you get it. And even then you have to check it. And one of the biggest problems with artists is that they don't bother to check it. And so I say, well, get a color checker. And they go, ah, it's too expensive. You know, I could figure out a cheaper way of doing it. Oh, let me hold. But the thing is, you got to check everything. The first thing you got to do before you start a painting is shut up, sit down and look at what it is that you're going to paint and absorb it and ask yourself some questions. Then squint your eyes and go, what's darker and what's lighter to try to get the values and then put it in. And if you're working from a photograph, take a daub of paint and stick it on the photograph to see if the value is right. You'll know that immediately. These are all things that you can kind of learn. There's no secret to it, but it's out there and you need to put it in your head. There's no way of translating it unless you have practice with it. Um, so if you want to reproduce your values, take a knife, put the, your paint on there, close your eye, hold your, your knife out to the subject that you're painting or put a dot of paint right onto your picture and get the values that you see. That's the best way to do it. Like with drawing, you get better the more drawings you do, the more paintings you do, you get better with value. But there's no shortcut because art isn't easy. It's out there. You need to put it on. Now, there's a lot of tools that you can kind of fake it. But, you know, and we think that art should be this easy A. You know, so you, in high school, they say, why don't you take an art class? That's always an easy A. Ha, 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 ha. But it's not, you know, because most of those people that are going to college, they're not building museums for them. You're not going to the Architects Museum in Paris. No, you're going to the Louvre, which holds artwork. You know, so it's hard. Yes, you got to practice and you got to do a lot of shitty values to learn how to do value. There's no quick way of doing that. 
and you can get a color checker if you have to. You can hold it, you'll paint up and try to match it that way. Or you can kind of put the whole painting down and then look at it and go, do my values feel good? You know that as things get further away from you, they get lighter and you know they get cooler. And that's a good value. Shadows are darker than, than light. And temperature is the thing that most people don't even know what that is. Is that art isn't easy. <laughs> it's like you're not missing anything except practice. Yeah, if you listen to a musician like a guitar player and they play like ah, fantastic, you listen to, you know, the 12 string guitar players and they're just doing their thing. And you're like, oh, man, you know, what's the difference between them and you? It's not some weird concept or trick that they have up their sleeve. They'll tell you, well, I practice more than you do. And I practice harder and I practice more accurate. The way that you practice normally, like in a musician, is like, so you know that at a certain point you're going to hit a wrong note and then you just hit another note and you keep on going. And so the way to properly practice is that you find out where it is that you're hitting the wrong note and then you take that apart and then you practice that and you go over it and over it and over it till your brain actually gets rewired so that it it can easily go over the certain areas. Yeah, you don't just accept that, well, next time I play it, I'm going to fix it then. You have to you have to take apart the bar or two that you're working on. With paintings, the same way is that you know that there's a rock in front here, you know, and and yeah, you can kind of make a rock sort of, or you can make that rock real. And you sit and you wipe it off and you do it again and wipe it off and do it again. There's a story that Richard Schmidt said with um, with one of his paintings. He was with his mentor outdoors painting, and uh, Richard Schmidt goes, "Oh my God, I got it right! Look at this!" and the and he finished the painting, which was just gorgeous. And the teacher came over and he looked at it and he said, you know what, Richard? You, yeah, you nailed it. That is absolutely perfect. And he picks up a big rag and he wipes it all off. And Richard goes, what are you doing? And he said, if you, if you know this, you should be able to paint it a hundred times. Do it again. If you can do it again, then you know it. If not, it's just a series of happy accidents. And the thing is, you know, when you practice the guitar, Sometimes you ask yourself, do I really know this, this measure? Or is it just because accidentally I kind of always kind of get it? There's a difference between knowing it and by gosh, by golly in it. And if you know it, you strive to perfect it and you work at it and you work at it. I have one of my students that is, is what I would call a protege, you know, Joe. He does five to six paintings a week finished. And like midway, he sends me a picture saying, is it signable? And he's on, he is every day, he's in my, he's texts me and he goes, what am I doing? Am I seeing it? He, I mean, he's tenaciously after me because he's after becoming per perfect. And you're invited to do that too. So do extraordinary work and hopefully I answered your questions and I'll talk to you next week. So there you have it. Now you know the secret and what it takes to be excellent at painting. As always, you can get information about my coaching, my podcast, and my YouTube videos by going to my website at www.stephanbauman.com. And there you can register for a free book, Everything I Know About Painting. If you'd like to get more information about coaching, you'll find that also on my website, or just pick up a phone and give me a call at 415 Six zero six nine zero seven four. That is my personal cell phone, and yes, I do answer it, so don't be surprised. Anyway, so go to my website for all the information about my PBS show and everything else, or just give me a call at 415-606-9074. And until the next time we meet, remember, paint with passion. Till next time, have a great day.